All right. Hello, folks. We'll be getting started in just a minute or two. Okay, we're up and running on YouTube as well. That's good. Well, good, uh, good day. Uh, good afternoon or good morning. Uh, I hope it's uh, as beautiful a day where you are as it is here in Boston. Uh, my name is Mark Mamagonian. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs for the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research. Nasser, it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, and to uh, thank the co-sponsor and organizer of today's event, the Arat Eskijin Museum and its wonderful director, Maggie Mangasarian Goshen. And I would like to invite my dear friend and colleague, Maggie, to say a few words of welcome and introduction as well. Maggie. Uh, thank you, Mark. And welcome everyone on behalf of Arat Eskijin Museum. Um, we are in for a special treat today uh, with Ms. Akhelesian. Uh, before I continue, I want to say thank you to Nasser for hosting today's event and many of the events the last one year through uh, webinars. And of course, a good friend, Mark Mamigonian, who has done a wonderful, wonderful presentation the last one year has been very uplifting, especially during the pandemic and uh, educational, and he kept us abreast of the current issues, both at home and in uh, our homeland, as well as introducing our young and upcoming scholars and publications. I'm sure today's event is no different with Misa Keleshian, a good friend, whom I've known since 2005, and we have become very inseparable. So at, at, as, as if we have created a, a friendship that every year we decide to pick a a subject and then present it to our viewers that we feel that it was very, it's very meaningful. And I know Misak will go over beyond and above uh, the duty of call to do his research. And such is this today's event. Two years ago, uh, I noticed an itinerary organized by uh, Gomidas Institute and Karla Garabedian from Armenian Film Foundation for a tour to historic Armenia, present day Turkey. Uh, and what not what sparked my interest was the uh, the tour included a trip to St. Thomas Monastery. My husband's name is Thomas. I've been married for many years, and I had never heard the name in for the Armenian monastery St. Thomas. So I decided to take the tour with my husband, along with twenty others who joined us. A wonderful, wonderful trip. But little did I know that what I was facing when I got there. Beforehand, I looked in the library books about St. Thomas. I couldn't find enough material. I contacted Nisag and he said, you won't find enough sources. I contacted Armin Oroyan who has taken zillion trips there and he wasn't very encouraging. He said, it's up in the mountains. It's very difficult climb. I don't think you can make it. But eventually I made it. And once I was there uh, at the foot of the monastery, I knew that I was in the middle of the beauty, the, the scenery was breathtaking and as if heaven and earth was uh, was there. So I want to say thank you for Misak taking this challenge and putting together today's presentation. A special thank you for all those individuals who's taken tours or taken photos of our monasteries because without their photos, we wouldn't be able to know or connect to our roots. And a special thank you goes to my friend, Armin Oroyan, who has taken over 100 trips and 1,200 visitors to connect to their roots. So back to you, Mark. Thank you. 
Are you saying that if you hadn't been married to someone named Thomas, you wouldn't have gone on the trip? No, I wouldn't have gone, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just never this know. It was my pilgrimage. It was a pilgrimage. Well, I want to just uh, mention a couple of uh, upcoming events as well uh, that may be of interest to people watching today. Uh, next week on Friday, May the 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 uh, a.m. Pacific, uh, Khachig Muradian will speak, uh, give a, a lecture entitled Internment and Destruction, Concentration Camps During the Armenian Genocide. This program is organized by the UCLA Promise Armenian Institute and co-sponsored by the Arat Eskijian Museum, the UCLA Richard Hovanesian Endowed Chair in Modern Armenian History, the UCLA Center for Near Eastern Studies, and Nasser. On Tuesday, May the 11th at 7.30 p.m., Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, a conversation with Umit Kurt and Dirk Moses. Uh, this is uh, organized by St. Leon Armenian Church and co-sponsored by a host of organizations, including uh, Nasser as well. And on Saturday, May 22nd, three weeks from today, uh, Nasser and the Arat Eskijan Museum will again partner on a, a exciting program uh, with... Um, Claude Mutafian, Levon Chukasazian, and Hrair Hak Hacherian called Treasures of the Armenian Churches of Romania. Uh, another program I know that's very near and dear to, to Maggie's heart and uh, which we are really looking forward to and hope you can join us. So as Maggie said, again, we have the privilege of welcoming back today uh, Misak Kalechian. Um, Misak, as I'm sure everyone knows, is in the category of people who don't need an introduction, but nonetheless, he is an electrical engineer and a pioneer entrepreneur in the field of IT technology. He is an ind independent investigative researcher uh, who we all know is passionate about finding untold stories uh, of courageous expressions and service to humanity by the U.S. government, its people, Near East relief organizations, and hidden or otherwise not well-known aspects of Armenian history and culture. So we get to uh, be the beneficiaries of his detective work again today, and we will hear about and see uh, Surtov Mas Vank of Gansak. Misak, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark, for the introduction, as well as uh, Maggie. Um, I have prepared this presentation in such a way to transport the viewer to the location itself. And at times I will let the music speak, speak. And other times we'll let the picture and video speak and for sure will be your guide to St. Thomas. According to Wikipedia, Lake Van, the largest lake in the Eastern Anatolian region in Turkey, as well as Armenian highlands lies in the far east of Turkey, in the province of Van and Bitlis. It is a saline soda lake receiving water from many small streams that descend from the surrounding mountains. And two of those mountains are that, that we know, Armenians know is Mount Sipan, which is here at the north, and then Mount Artos or Arder, which is here in the south. June, 18, 2019 was the day. A group of Armenian pilgrims from around the world visited the ruined monastery and spent several memorable hours communing with nature, their faith and ancestors. We left the hotel from Van. The bus drove us along the shores of Lake Van. As we were driving by, we passed by across Akhtamar, we could see the, the island. And then we went all the way to St. Thomas, which is right here. And it, is, it, it was like one unique journey. According to historian Tohma Arzruni, St. Thomas was built in the 10th century by the Arzruni family to house the relics of St. Thomas. These monastic complex is made out of St. Thomas Church, its narthex, which is Kavit, 
convent buildings and the whole being surrounded by an enclosure which was built in 1671 to protect the monastery from looting. St. Thomas at Kanzak was ransacked during the 1895 Hamidian uh, massacres and then again in 1915. But cruising along Lake Van, the bus cruising uh, uh, alongside Lake Van, British historian Ara Sarafian of Domidas Institute in London is briefing us in Hayot Sor, the place where the supposedly legendary patriarch and founder of Armenian nation, Haik Nabet, fought against King Pell and defeated him. On the left, we would be seeing the village of Korkom, which is Arshil Gorky was born. And on the horizon, uh, we'll see the village of Mokrapet and Norkur, and where the surrounding area population was over 80%. And eventually we're gonna be driving through Mohrapet and Norkur going towards Tenta. Okay, Khorkom village is to our left, where Ashin Gorki comes from. To our right is uh, Hayat Sor, Havasor in Turkish. Hayat Sor is the, the, the location of the biblical battle between Haik and uh, Pel. And, and, Pel. Um, and, and later we'll see the village called, we might pass to call Pel, Pelu, which is also where Pell was supposedly buried. So this area is very much part of Armenian folklore. Um, I mean, every village has its own story, but plus the big stories as well. So uh, the battle between the biblical, no, not biblical, High David was supposedly here. Um, it had about 80, 80% Armenian population. It's obvious why the Armenians populate these areas because they're particularly fertile. They're irrigated by the Shamiram. Uh, Canal, so it's a very fertile area, very productive for agricultural production. Because further up, it's much more mountainous and much harder to live. But these areas, as you can see, the soil is very good, and it's had the agricultural production for millennia. Um, of well, the Turkish narrative here, when we when, when we come by here, we will talk about the Seljuk cemetery. We will talk about Seljuk um, princes. But on the other, the Armenian narrative is suppressed or doesn't exist at all. Only in recent years, there's the more of the awareness of a relatively recent phenomenon, and it's it's still limited. We hope with time, it will change uh, as Turkey hopefully turns for the better, the more open society, and we have a role to play in that as well. How we relate, what we ask for people to do, by publishing about these locations ourselves, and the ordinary church themselves are encouraged themselves are also interested because if we provide information, they will also use it. But official Turkey doesn't do that still, right? So it's a very... Norkur and see ahead of us, to our right there, that, that used to be called Mohrapert. You have Norkur, again, our big Armenian settlements. And then obviously we have to stop because we have arrived to a checkpoint by the gendarmes and uh, they checked uh, you know the paperwork of the bus and then they said you know we're all foreigners we're, we're good to go hepsim is yabanchi and then we continued towards uh villages of mohrapert and norhu after stopping at the checkpoint we entered what used to be the villages of mohrapert and norhu obviously the first thing you will see is the reception party and a glimpse of current village life, as well as the beauty of Hayotso. No wonder our ancestors used to say, Van in this world and paradise in the next. And Van in this world and paradise in the next.
the green fields, the mountain ranges, blue skies, Mount, are there or are those? While the bus was cruising along the shores of Lake Van toward St. Thomas and being in the heart of Hyotsor where all, we were all looking from the bus window towards the exceptional blue waters and the beauty of Van's natural beauty. I was wondering in a bus, I was wondering that how most probably Armenian fishermen daily lives were around hundred years ago. Later, research showed me that in fact, there was a fisherman from Lake Van region who retreated with the Russian army in 1915 and then emigrated to Fresno in USA. And, his, and in his last years, he demonstrated the fisherman's dance. With that act, the actual cultural dance has been preserved in Armenia today. You will, we, uh, you will watch a short clip of our bus along the shores of Lake Van and the fisherman's dance perform. This is some of our lost culture, a, a little piece of it. And then another one is we traveled across a graveled road, touching Lake Van is taking us towards St. Thomas. Thank you. 
the actual road that we drove to make it to this point. It's Island of Lim and Island of Lim, Akhtama. Getting into the village of Kansai. there up on the hill to the left look at the fields of Kansak these used to be Armenian agricultural lands the mountain where St. Thomas is on was called Gabuit Gorler which means blue hip mountain and you can hardly see it but that's where St. Thomas is we're going to be driving and then stopping somewhere around here. And from there, we're gonna go up. The bus stopped and we are all excited to ascend St. Thomas. That you hardly can see in this picture, but with some digital technology, the camera zoom will help you out. And there it is, perched on a hill. It looks so easy to get there and it's just, you know, right up on the horizon. All you gotta do is just walk up there, but that's not the case. This was the starting line. We, you know, disembarked the bus and some of us started fast, others slow. It's not an easy climb. It is, you know, 6,600 feet, about 2,000 meters height. Uh, above sea level, but where we're starting, uh, you know, right, right from the seashore is about 1300 feet climb or about 400 meters climb. So it, it takes us, it took us, you know, between 45 and 90 minutes. Could be dangerous for folks with health issues. Um, as it is located in the middle of nowhere, no 911 or an ambulance for help, God forbid, if something happens. But let me give you the surrounding view and some 360 magic. And there's Maggie, Ara, Irena, me, with three cameras, one on my head, one in my, ha uh, one in my hand, and another on my chest. We got an alpine climber here, Anita, my wife. And there it is, we're going up there. People helping others. Some already up there. As I said, I had a 360 camera on my head, one on my chest. And I, I look like a walking robot. But that's what allows us to capture these. And here is Toma literally flying. Look at him, he's in the air. And Rita trying to catch up her breath here. I mean, you know, it was very hot. Definitely you needed gallons of water. A lot of people had to stop, including myself around, you know, the road many, many times to cut, catch our breath. Uh, the guide, he took some of us through a different, you know, shortcut 
others we took the longer road and you can see here ara carla and you know and some others standing by the shades of the tree because it was very hot but the view is magnificent okay of course, I'm not going to drag you for more than one hour to, to go up there, but I figured I can speed up things to, to let you go and make it see what we saw as we climbed up. And that will help us you know, understand what is the surrounding look like and enjoy the quick ride. speed in the back, you think you're making it, but it's still, you have to climb a lot to make it there. There you go. You just climbed all the way up to St. Thomas. You see here from the Alianakan family, from our group, as they were standing near there, of course, I didn't know either, and they didn't know either, that only the previous year, they tried to burn part of St. Thomas. burning of the narthex, you know, on the cavi right here. And if we zoom on it, you can see that there was like, you know, fire there only last year or the previous year than what we visited. Here we go. Ara, Carla, Andrea, Ricor, Murat, Vasken, and others from our group discovering the surrounding of St. Thomas. The surrounding mountains are so beautiful. You think you're in Switzerland with the pine, you know, trees and all that. <clears throat> and this is how the surrounding mountains look like. This is the Kavit entrance, the Nartek entrance. This was the hardest part for me. As you know, Armenian church architecture has superb acoustics. 
that resonates in the church. We were with a couple of cows in the church. Although Krikor initially chased out more than 13, 14 cows. But at what point, at one point, I was alone in the church. And from the acoustics, I could hear the cow literally peeing and defecating sound in the church, which gave me, gave me goosebumps. But I made a point to check what does it say about house of God in Islam? I did find it in the Quran, chapter 29, verse 46. 
آمناً بالذي أنزل إلينا وأنزل إليكم إلهنا وإلهكم واحد ونحن له مسلمون. Do not argue with the people of Scripture or people of the book, which is the, which are the Jews, the uh, Islam, Muslims, as well as the Christian, except in a way that is best for those who committed injustice among them and say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you. And our Allah and your Allah is one. And we are Muslim or in submission to him. Which means peeing and defecating in the house of Allah gave me, after giving me the goosebumps, and you know the, the chapter 29 46 is this means that letting animals defecating in a monastery is disrespecting Allah. People of the book are Muslims, Christians, and Jews religiously. But in the next slide, we will see if what kind of protection is also from the political side of things. The Turkish government hates and rejects the Sevres Treaty as it partitions Turkey into independent Kurdish and Armenian parts. But under the leadership of Mustafa Kemal, they are extremely proud to have significantly won back partition Turkey by the Lausanne Peace Treaty, where Armenians and Kurds lost large swaths of lands, which got incorporated into current Republican Turkey. Right from the page of Turkish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Turkey has obligations. It says Article 14, the Turkish national, nationals belonging to the non-Muslim minorities shall enjoy the same treatment and security in law and in fact as other Turkish nationals. In particular, they shall have an equal right to establish, manage and control at their own expense any charitable, religious and social institutions. And most important, Article 42 specifies the Turkish government undertakes to grant full protection to the churches, synagogues, cemeteries, and the other religious establishment of the above mentioned minorities. But in reality, the Turkish government does not provide full protection to the churches as it signed in the Lausanne Peace Treaty, also does not stop, imprison, or punish individuals who openly advertise on YouTube with their phone numbers how and where to look for Armenian gold. And here are their phone numbers. You can call them to, to see where you can find. And I'm going to show you a short trip, that, you know, clips of that YouTube, it shows you- Şimdi söyler de, para var nerede? Sanki paranın yerini söylesem çıkartacaklar. Ben gene de söyleyeyim de. Abi duymuyorsun değil mi? Uyuyordu benim. Şimdi arkadaşlar, değirmen e, kiliselerde paralar nerede? Bana mı çay getirdin? Kiliseler definecilerin çok 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 istediği yerler ama ne yazık ki birçok kiliselerde ne arayacağını bilmiyor. Nerede ne arayacağını bilmiyor. Ben, ben anlatıyorum sonra bana dava açıyorlar. Anlattığına göre demek ki çıkarmış. Ulan bir şey çıkarttığımız falan yok oğlum. They, they not only mock but they also uh, try to find... Öğrendik anlatıyoruz işte. Uh, oops, it's hopping, it's not doing what I wanted to do. Anyway, it, it shows where... It shows where, where, you know, you can find the churches and where we can, we can actually look for the gold with their drawing. And there's another one, which is going to show you where to find gold. And you can see here, there's Ani, there's Kars Arakel Church, Diyarbakir, 
in Kaiser. And literally saying is when you look around there, that's where you're gonna find gold. Canın içinde bir bölüme veya dış temel direktöre de yapılabilir. Ki merdiven altları. Under saklanılan yerler ve giriş merdivenleri olan iç mekanında üst basically they're guiding people to the ruin of the sorting en alttaki veya en alttaki üçüncü basamağın içi dolgu olabilir. Özellikle taş veya moloz dolgulu merdivenler bu açıdan çok önemlidir. Üç, kapı the worst thing is that They show right in front of the church, and you know, entry doors. That's where the gold is hidden. Look at it. Just the way that the door is drawn, they show gold. Well, let's go back to where we are. We are in our plan, but there's a connection there. That's why I shared those YouTube's. French historian Jean Thierry found this rock, the one on the left, and printed it in his book. But Canadian photographer, Harar Hor, uh, Hawk Khacherian, took this beautiful photo a few years back. It reads roughly, I, priest Thomas, servant, servant of Jesus and Catholicos Philippos, with great difficulty, I have built this enclosure walls in 1671. That was, 350 years ago. About 50 years difference, notice the wall. There used to be a side entrance right here. But now that wall is down. This is a 1970 picture. You see the arch, even in 1980, That arch was, that was the main entrance. They knocked on the wall. And in 2019, you see the wall is completely gone and the entrance used to be here. Let me show you what I meant when they, when are, you know, you might think it is a ridiculous idea what was shown in those YouTubes. The video showed hidden Armenian gold located right at the door entrances of churches. This is where they should be looking for the gold. It gave them direction. This is St. Thomas Monastery photographed by a drone, right from the above. This monastery is not on, on a main road or a center of a city. So that means you need to climb up all the way up there to reach it. But I am going to show you how people actually go and dig up looking for gold. It is unbelievably true. And let me zoom. You see, this is where the arch was. And this is where the wall was. Look at here, they dug a, a hole here, right at the entrance, right on the top of a mountain, 6,600 feet above sea level. Look at the dugout hole right at the entrance level, right here. This was a 1980 picture with the arch, which is no longer there. Look at the dome difference. Look at the new opening on corner of the narthex or the kavit right here. Before and after 1980, 2019, you see the dome or the compet, how it's changing. The dome is getting shorter as well as removal of bricks on the window. 
And this is where searching for gold is. There's another one picture. This is in 1980. There used to be a rock right here. And this is on the narthex in the Kavit area where I entered this you know, area. Look at it in 2019, how it's missing that rock. People literally think that beyond, beyond those rocks, there are gold hidden. Paolo Cuneo's picture, which were in 60s and 70s. If you take a look at the church, how it looked, and including inside the church where the Quran, you can see it's elevated right here. But look at the difference between 1970 and 2019. Not only the elevated part, it's gone. They have actually dug in there looking for gold. And they poked a hole in, in you know, behind the Quran. This picture on the left is 2012. How deep they dug looking for the gold. I mean, that's a lot of work. And then in 2019, when we went, the area is straight. We wouldn't know if those pictures, old and no, you know, new ones could be compared. And again, the wall, how high it used to be. Look here at the corner here and the corner. And look at here. This is the side where we entered the church. We thought this was the entrance while the wall is knocked down. They're literally digging holes and pulling bricks. So when you pull bricks like this, obviously you're helping out in, in making the church fall apart. Church fall apart. This is the main entrance on the left and on the right, you can see the evolution of brick by brick gradual destruction. This is how it used to be around 1970s. This is what in 2019. Look at these big holes. Entrance door holes are getting bigger. Before and after. St. Thomas with the priest on the roof. Notice how wooden beams and stones are pulled up and the hole open right inside the narthex or the kavit. Every stone has a history, a memory, a pilgrim's engraving dedication on the roof of the church. Armenian writings. Every rock has its own story. Next slides are from a group of French Armenians from the website vanker.org from France 
who took these drone pictures in 2019, flying clock clockwise around St. Thomas, giving us a different visual perspective from above. Look at the Lake Vaughan background. We can see how bad the wall, this is where we entered the church, if you remember, how bad the wall is falling apart or making, they're making it fall apart actually. These are man-made wavy wall destruction. Look at the holes they're digging up. And I want you to remember this slanted tree right here, the one on the, on the left. Just remember this tree. And we continue going around St. Thomas so you have a better perspective. And this is where they dug a hole looking for gold. And this is the dome. You can see here in the background, the island of Lim and Achtamar. And this is the dome right from the top of it. Some of our group members with Lake Vaughan in the background. The cemetery of Kanzak Monastery is located outside the wall on the western slope which overlooks the site right here. The masterpieces Hrarok Khacherian in 2014 photographed more Khachkars from what we saw in 2000, our 2019 visit. Several tombstones were scattered all over the place. On the right, one of the 14th century cross stones of the cemetery of St. Thomas, the late Samvel Garabedian of research on Armenian architecture, he compared, this is the broken one, this used to be complete. And he had this question, did the gold diggers hope to find hidden treasures inside the stone? Or did they break the Khachkar simply out of hatred of the cross? The cemetery of St. Thomas we found in 2019, how it looked. And it's very appropriate to play a lullaby from Van called Dream by Gata Band. Yeraz, it's a Vana, Vana Aurora, the Van Lullaby.
This is how Rafi said goodbye to St. Thomas. Look at the cows, how they're looking at the Buddha. Maggie fulfilled her pilgrimage by bringing Toma, her husband, to St. Thomas. And everybody was able to climb and enjoy this magnificent view from the above. But then you cannot live this place. You cannot leave it. Your ancestors, your ancestors are calling you. And look, even at the bus, Rafi is playing to the fields where Armenians used to their agriculture, as well as Lake Van. Another destroyed church as well in Kansai. Our group before taking leave. This is in winter, St. Thomas right there. Our men took a group in 1992. And the interesting part is that he they came by boat while we drove by bus. They came, they came by boat and they went up from the other side of the mountain that I didn't know. I just found out this yesterday itself. And here he is, Armen Aroyan in 1992, in April. This is the hill where it is perched, St. Thomas. And this morning, I opened my email, Stevenson from Scotland, he sent me this. He took a photo from the plane as he was flying from Vaughan. This is where St. Thomas is. And this is the other one. So basically we, the bus parked right here. And then we took this road to go all the way to, so we took this road. So apparently there's another road which comes from this side as well that uh, Hawk Hacherian, Harar Hacherian has taken. See, this is Lake Van. We came on the other side of the mountain, but they came from this side to reach, which I only found out about two days ago. But wait, let's fly over St. Thomas. How can we leave it without that? Enjoy it.
obviously drones bring total different perspective when you can fly over them. And here it is. This is how St. Thomas looked in 1910 with the entrance and some priest over the wall, see how high the wall was. And here is the tree, the slanted tree that I told you to take notice on an earlier picture. That tree from Hawks Ryer's picture is right here. And I asked myself, and I can ask you too, or anyone, a simple question. If you have under open sky, snow, sleet, sun, cold, and heat, meaning nature's effects, which will last longer? Does the wood last long or the hard rock? Obviously, the immediate answer will be rocks will you know, last longer, but not with St. Thomas. And let me explain to you why. If this tree or this slanted bush can survive to today, okay, how come rocks and building like this so strong that could, you know, carry tons of weight if man-made, you know, uh, destruction is not made? And here I want to bring Abraham Lincoln's, uh, you know, quote where he says. You can fool all the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. And this is a picture by Samuel Garabedian. Here again, that same tree survived here. We saw cows, you know, like pastures, they go and eat, yet the, the tree survives. Yet these rocks, hard built, you know, uh, monastery walls, which are at least 350 years old, the walls I'm talking about, and the church from the 10th century. So 11 decades, it stood. The tree continues, but man-made disasters bring it down. St. Thomas Monastery in details with priest on the roof. But there is something unique about St. Thomas. Contrary to normal church domes, instead of having a cross on the top of the dome, there is a spear or a lance, nizag. One side, one side, there was a picture of Mary, mother of Jesus. And on the other side, the crucifixion of Jesus. Also, very strangely enough, in Latin characters, the word Queen Elizabeth was written there. I have no idea what that means or what in Latin characters Queen Elizabeth was written. And it's got another story to it is in 1903, remember this picture, we know the record is 1910, taken 1910. But in 1903, Catholicos uh, deputy, Catholicos Agampo Hanot, priest Arsen from the Catholicos of Achtamar, replaces the spear with a cross and takes the spear to Achtamar. The same year, in 1903, a very pious woman dreams St. Thomas asking her to return the spear to its original place. The Kansak village people, all of them go to Achtamar and complain and ask to the deputy, uh, you know, Gatorgo uh, Sagan Pohanor, priest, to return the spear. The same year, the people's wish comes through and the spear is returned. 
Well, let's check the source. We know the picture that you are looking at was taken in 1910. Let's see what is it on the dome. And some digital magic makes it, we can zoom on it. And it is true. This picture was in 1910 and it's not a cross, it's a spear. So on one side, Mary, mother of Jesus, and on the other side, crucifixion of the Jesus was there, and it was written Queen Elizabeth. I, my source does not explain what that meant, but this is how I'm going to end it, and thank you very much for your patience and listening. Special thanks and credits for all these folks. Thank you. Isaac, thank you very much. Uh, and and uh, I just posted a, a comment in the chat for anyone uh, who wishes to ask a question, please use the Zoom Q&A. There was one question already about the music that you used. Do you have a, do you remember or can, do you have a list of, of the various performers uh, of the music that you used in the yes. presentation? Yes, they, they are here, listed ah, here. Very good. Can, can you point them out? Okay. I got the delay, uh, I mean, the dream from the lullaby was from Avak Markarian and Karakin Arakelian. Uh, Sareri Hovim Mernem is by La Dinava. Um, and Vayaman is when we entered the, uh, you know, Hayat Sur. And also the soup soup was corrected by, uh, done by Samuel Yervinyan. And uh, the dance is done by Arin, uh, you know, uh, the Vana Tsiknors or the, you know, so there you go. Thank you. Is a comment and question from Carla Garabetian, who, who, of course, we saw in some of the some of the images uh, as on the trip. Uh, do you have any thoughts on what Armenian community or the international community might do to help preserve this building, or do you know of anything that is being done? Uh, actually, what we have seen has been done is that all that destruction that we've seen over the years. Yeah. And imagine without those, those photos or, you know, footage, we wouldn't know what was before. I mean, I was surprised when I saw a picture which was provided by uh, Hawk, Harar Khacherian, uh, where the narthex was burned just one year before our visit. And, you know, when we went there, you couldn't tell what has happened before. So, um and, 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 and another thing that I wanted to say that I forgot, while walking in the ruins there, and I, I took this souvenir and I brought it with me. It's a bullet cartridge. Hmm. Okay. And maybe I can put some light on it so that it could be seen as a bullet that from St. Thomas that I, I found it. So somebody is actually, you know, firing at it too. The, the, the sad part is that many of the Armenian religious folks as well haven't spoken about St. Thomas. The only other St. Thomas that I know is in Akulis, in Nachichevan. Mm. There are no, I don't think there are any other St. Thomases, but I could be wrong. But the awareness is not there. Nobody is taught. Nobody, I mean, I had really hard time finding resources about this. And I couldn't believe when I found the story of that spear on that, you know, I mean, how many churches you have seen with no cross on it? And this one happened to have a spear on it. And an English character written Queen Elizabeth. I don't know which queen. I don't know. I have no idea on that. But I encourage everybody, next time you see a religious person, ask them about St. Thomas. See if they know. 
And uh, do you do you know in in the course of your readings on on this uh, when when specifically the the Vank was abandoned? Yes, in 1915. In 1895, Kurdish uh, tribes attacked it and you know ransacked it, but um, eventually it was in 1915 that you know everybody abandoned. I mean, uh, but just the and and by the way, um, uh, the church is built by Manuel, architect Manuel, who is the same one who built Achtamar. I have the resource reading that as well. And it, it is, I mean, before visiting 2019, I haven't even heard of St. Thomas. Mm. And we just landed with that bus there. And, you know, uh, Maggie's pilgrimage plan and Ara's and Carla's plan to take us, uh, you know, to wonderful places. Uh, St. Thomas, I will never forget. I will never forget. Even 4K videos that I showed around, surrounding it, they do not do justice what you can see with your own eyes. It's unfortunate to think that the other uh, Surp Tov Mas that you mentioned in Nakhchivan is, I presume, also, well, not also, is completely gone. Completely. Yeah. That is completely gone. Yeah. Yes. Uh, another question, did you have conversations while you were in in the area with any of the local Turks or Kurds about the monastery and did they have any interesting comments? Um, I did not, but some of the group members uh, did have a chance. I think there was a shepherd because if you notice the cows, uh, there, there is, by the way, a fountain there to the left. If you remember the video when when I was going up all the way up and the church was on the right, you saw cows crossing over going towards the church. So the one on the left, there's a water fountain. And uh, according to the sources that I've been reading here, uh, they called it a holy fountain. So they used to take people there to, you know, uh, cure them from illnesses and stuff like that. And uh, there was a, but I, I didn't talk to him. I was too emotional. I was like in shock and all oh, to see that beauty, that 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 uh, you know, uh, just being there after climbing for a, an hour, huffing and puffing, and and seeing the church uh, right there, but not able to make it, and it's hot and everything, and while worried uh, for other members to make it as well, uh, we were very glad that uh, you know uh, everybody made it there because when we started initially we could tell some of us would not be able to get there because of health reasons and 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 it is not an easy climb 1300 feet with a such a short distance and uh, so that, uh, I didn't have any reaction but I know uh, some people were, were talking to the shepherd and the truck tractor driver as well uh, but I didn't have a chance to do that and and how long were you actually there at the at the monastery? Uh, I would think they were like uh, we were like it took us about an hour to climb. So I would think overall we were like about two and a half hours between the bus and you know because we had to go back and you know the, the second part of the journey was also beautiful in the sense of we had to drive back. We were so tired, exhausted. We went to a restaurant. And, and right across Achtamar, we, we ate uh, the darech, the fish uh, there, uh, symbolic. We watched Achtamar from far away. And after we had lunch there, late lunch, we took the boat and went to Achtamar. So that June 18, 2019, and nothing, nothing will replace what we felt or I felt in, in St. Thomas, nothing. Well, there are a number of uh, comments here uh, thanking you for the for the presentation and for giving us a sense of of the place and and for documenting what what you saw there. Um, right. This time, I wanted it to be a little different. I wanted the video and the music to to say a lot of things that human being cannot express them. 
And I thought, you know, elevating people and, and, and like floating over Lake Van, uh, over, you know, uh, seeing uh, uh, the mountain of Arter and St. Thomas and, and providing drone flight overs to have a different perspective as humans as we walk and, uh, and, 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 and showing that even religiously it is forbidden and blasphemous to, to destroy or, or have, uh, you know, animals defecate in, in the church or synagogue or, or, or a mosque or, or even, uh, uh, you know, a temple. Uh, also, politically, the, the Turkish government and the foreign ministry are obligated to fence, mm. to, to, to save. And, and if, if you can, I mean, today, if on Twitter or on YouTube, you say the wrong things about Turkish government, they pick you up and take you to jail on, on Facebook posting. Yet these people, and there are tens and tens of YouTube videos, they're literally drawing the churches where to look for the, you know, the gold, where is the possible hiding. But in reality, the real truth behind that is when you dig the foundation, when you pick up the, the, the gold is not under the, the ground. The gold is the actual structure. So they can build, bring in tens of thousands of tourists. They could even make money out of that as they're doing in other places. That's where the gold is. It's not under, you know, like we saw the Khachkar, it's broken in half. It's from 14th century. The, the church is built in 10th century. They were praising God. They were praising Allah there at least three decades before the Seljuk became uh, Turks and be, became, uh, you know, embraced uh, the, the faith of Islam. So there's 300 years of, we were praising that before that. It is not right. It's amazing that the... Uh the mythology of, of Armenian wealth and hidden wealth, even after a century of the places no longer being populated by Armenians, that will not go away. In fact, maybe it's even gaining in strength. Uh, for those who recently saw Ani Hovanissian's film, The, the Hidden right. Map, which also talked about this, everywhere she went, there were holes being dug, people looking for these treasures and not knowing where the treasures were as you as you so aptly put it when when i saw that uh, drone pictures you know and i looked i said oh my god right at the arch i looked all around the perimeters there isn't a single hole you know uh, hole dug except where the arch was the yeah. entrance and you can see in the youtube saying that oh that's where they're hiding it i mean and I, and i said the you saw it's up there. Uh, it's not on the main road. It's not on a busy street to see a lot of people are going. So your intention has to be going up there and digging, digging and even ruining those walls. You saw those destruction. And inside the church, brick by brick, they're removing. And then the foundation will obviously is going to fall apart because um, nobody uh, you know takes care of it or, or defends it if there are any thieves or any uh, people who are digging for, uh, you know, treasures. A comment from Sylvie Marion. Thank you, Sylvie, that in uh, Michel Terry's book, uh, that there are 11 uh, Surptovma monasteries listed. So uh, I, I don't know where all of them uh, were exactly, but uh, that uh, information is available. So you have at least a number of other trips in your future, uh, Maggie, to cover them all. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, are, do you know, of course, because of COVID, uh, to say nothing of perhaps uh, other situations, I don't imagine there are trips being planned to, to uh, historic Armenia right now, but do you know of any future plans for such trips as, as you took in, in 2019? Well, we were planning to go there on um, 2020 when COVID started and we all had to cancel uh, because uh, I am not even a vanity, but once you go, uh, you know, to your, to, to your ancestors, the feeling, the, 
what you feel, what you see, although we go and see a lot of uh, ruins, but it says a lot about our history, about our ancestors, and about you know how we are built. I've traveled all around the world and seen all kinds of beauties and things. But what I felt in Vaughn, I never felt in my whole life. Mm. Carla writes that we are hoping to have another trip when we can. So absolutely. When we can has a big asterisk next to it these days, but hopefully sooner rather than later, I guess. Right. Maggie, I, you're muted, but do you have any final words for us? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think, anyway. I think she's, she's too emotional to speak. She, she'd rather not speak, right? Yeah, she's nodding. I understand the feeling and, and, and you know. And Misak, again, many, many comments uh, in, in the Q&A thanking you for the wonderful presentation. I will amplify them by saying once again, thank you so much and pointing out to everyone that uh, the video that uh, you have just watched uh, will be on the Nasser YouTube channel, uh, you know, more or less immediately after the program. I think it takes a little while to render itself before it can be watched. So please let people know. Uh, especially people from the Van region, maybe whose families are from there. But as as Misak said, his family is not from Van, nor is mine, and it's an amazing, amazing uh, thing to be able to see. So again, thank you for your uh, for your your leg work uh, as as well as your brain work in in putting this program together. And we look forward to the next time. Thank you very much for hosting me. It has been a pleasure. And thank you for your patience and understanding. Thank Absolutely. You. Stay well and, and thank you everyone for, for tuning in. Take care.